Well, welcome back to the shop. This is my new purchase. It is a Walker Turner radial drill. I haven't got a spot for it yet. And I'm just sort of looking at it now. Let me just start off with the bad things, but the gentleman I bought it from laid it down to get it. I don't, I don't know why he laid the machine down. I just don't. It obviously broke the handle off here. And it seemed to crush this box, which the motor still turns okay, so I don't feel any interference in there, but I don't know if it did any harm either. And I'm going to have to go through all the motions of getting this thing wired up and just to see if it's broken. I don't even know if it ever worked. I'm assuming it did. But it's a it's an outstanding machine you know, in terms of the build quality. Huge T-slot table on it. Um, you know, I think he... Yeah, this is all fresh stuff that he broke off, so... I, I, I've seen worse. I'm not going to dwell on it. I'm just going to fix it. You know, it's not, not worse than I've dealt with before. So I'm going to start poking around. I've got to put a VFD on this because it's a three-phase motor. And I only have a single phase in the shop. So my job is to sort of look at the wiring of this thing and figure out what I need to do to wire it up. This is not something that is completely new to me. This is a uh, another Walker Turner drill press that I have. And then I've got this VFD, this KB series. Uh, been excellent. Super happy with this. I really like the setup. Again, for those of you that are new to the shop, the neat thing about the the VFD is I can just you know dial the speed into just about anything I want. And then with the three phase, I also get reverse out of it, so I can stop it and go reverse. So the. A couple days later, I've got some of the parts I think I need. I'm going to rewire this. This wire is pretty old and brittle. It's a huge wire, very heavy duty. But I think what happens with the VFD is it knocks the... Anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll maybe get into the theory some other time. But ultimately, this is a half horsepower motor, and when you go through a VFD, it's going to... Not, not so much single phase, but it's never going to develop the full torque that it, that it could. And I think this, uh, this 12 gauge or... 12 gauge SO cable. No, actually, this is 14.3. Um, shit. I'm going to run this temporarily. <laughs> I'm going to just to see if this thing works, and then we're going to look at the VFD and see where we're at. Maybe maybe I can get some 12.3 SO cable to run over here. Well, I'm not exactly sure where to put you, but you've got a bird's eye view effectively of what I've got temporarily wired up here, which is just. The power 110 volts in, and this should be 220 out. Hopefully, it works. Now, the instructions are horrible. They didn't have anything in terms of how to program this. So these are the hertz. You can see the 24. It's probably flashing for you. But the 65 hertz. Stop. Reverse. Run. Reverse. Well, well that's perfect. So that's shocking me. So I'm not really sure what to do in terms of showing you, you know, how I'm going to do this because I'm just making it up as I go. What we had is a three-phase switch, and of course I don't have three-phase out of the wall, so I've got this inverter. And I'll explain this later on, but that's upside down. But what I've got to do is get that up here. So I'm just going to mess around and see the best way to do that. I've got it functional. The VFD it couldn't be easier to hook up. The thing I don't like about it is it doesn't have uh, the typical outlets like a, a conduit box would. It just, just the wires just hang out of the bottom. I don't like that. I think typically this is designed to be in a cabinet, and you run remotes. You could run remote. You could do all the functions off the front of this and program it so that you just have you know one or two buttons on the front of the machine. For me, that's to build a cabinet on the back and all that. I think it'd be a fun exercise one day, maybe with a lathe or something that has a big cabinet underneath it. This one doesn't. Um, I'd use that as storage. 
But in this particular case, uh, this is how it's going to be. I just went ahead and fixed it to a piece of ABS plastic and used some nut certs in the back of it. So I've still got to fix the wire to something here. But what I mean by that is that the cord will migrate in and out, back and forth, and I need to figure out what the extent of that travel is and make sure I don't immortalize anything like, like see, this would be a bad idea because, anyway, I'm still going to learn my way around the machine, but before, in order to do that, I'm going to clean it up now. So I've just got some all-purpose cleaner and a bunch of shop rags, and I'm going to go through, clean all the dust, sawdust off of this, find the oil ports, grease everything, and I'll bring it back when it's a little bit more cleaned up. They have a coat of... They painted this with a mop and a bucket. It is, it is on here so thick, I don't particularly mind. It doesn't seem to be impeding anything at this point, but I'm going to go ahead and just start cleaning it up. As I mentioned before, when the guy set this thing down, he broke, you know, crushed that. Luckily, the motor works. Broke this handle off, some sort of cast aluminum, and snapped the knob off of here. I do have the. He did. He was nice enough to leave me the knob. We went with this, so I'm going to. I don't know. I think this will unscrew out of here, but I, I want to be careful on this edge out here. I don't know how brittle that is. So I'm going to mess around with this, see if I can rebuild these knobs. Well, I'm sorry, I, I got sort of mesmerized by the lathe. I had to turn down a, I found a stainless steel rivet or, or bolt or something. It didn't have a, a slot or a screw or anything in it, so it was sort of, the, but not quite a lag bolt. Stainless, and I ended up turning it down on the, on the little mini lathe and created an interference fit. I just sort of locked out. Everything went together real nicely, and I was having a good time. I didn't film it, and I went ahead and wire wheeled this thing. So I think what I'm going to do is paint this. The machine, in my mind, should be gray. Every every old machine should be gray. It's green. You know, I don't want to change the whole thing. But as I go through and redo it, I'm going to, you know, make a it's going to be like that Johnny Cash song, one piece at a time, but, but gray. Back out here in the shop. It's early in the morning, relatively early in the morning. I, I just I've got a problem. I don't know where I'm going to put this, but I but I've got some other things I can work on while I think about that. The first thing that I may have mentioned this before is I'm not real thrilled about the way the housing gets wired up, and I didn't think my way through the process enough. I don't want to remanufacture everything. I'm going to put a little plate back here to <clears throat> to capture these wires. I have some little tiny screws that should hold that in there. That should give me a little bit of strain relief and, you know, at least maybe make it look a little bit better. Uh, I went through and remade this handle. I've got, I only painted part of it. I'll put some wax, some furniture wax on the, on the handle to keep the handle from rusting. And I painted that gray. And then the other handle here was snapped off and oh, right here. And what I need to do is take this hole, which is roughly 12 millimeters, and drill it out to half inch, which is about 13 millimeters. And then drill a hole in it and put a, a roll pin of some sort in there. And then this will be my hand wheel for that. And the material is a little harder than I thought, so I ground a flat on here so I can hold it with a vise. And then hopefully we can get through that. That should also be a good spot to uh, drill in the roll pin. Well, there should be a slight interference fit. They're drilled the same size, and this one is knurled. So hopefully that goes on correctly. I'm going to favor the left side just a little bit so that if I need to 
tap it one way to get the keyway to align it goes. That's too tight. Shit. A little better. We're back at the drill press today. I, it's been a week or two. I completely lost track of where I'm at with this video, so it's a little bit hard. I've got it wired up. I've got the inverter, or the VFD, you know, all wired up. Everything is functional with it. And I just watched a Mr. Pete video the other day on how to get this Jacob's tapered chuck off of here. I think the next step is to, you know, clean the chuck off. And, and I got most of the ways wiped down in there. I still got a lot, a long way to go. But I think once I get this cleaned up, get the chuck nice and, and freed up, then I'll be effectively done enough to make this video. But let me take a quick shot outside and show you the other project that I got that's been holding me up. It's my 92 Ford F-150. I've been real happy with it. I bought another one. <laughs> it's It runs fine, everything's good, it just needs some brakes. So I'm just waiting for the parts to slowly trickle in. My workbench was clean. But now it's just the repository for all these parts. Yeah. Got it. Got it. That's called a Jacobs taper as opposed to a Morris taper. Well, I'll show you that in a little bit, but but I think what we gotta do now is go ahead and press this out of here and we'll get it cleaned up and then reassemble it. Hopefully I don't break it. I broke one of these before because I was an idiot. And I pushed on the teeth. And you don't want to you don't want to push on here, you wanna push on the face. Well, there's been a correction in my plans. I had planned on going to, to go ahead and clean this up and, and use it again. And I think it's a, I mean, it's a Jacob's Chuck. It's nice and everything, but I forgot that I had this Grizzly keyless Chuck. It's far nicer for, for, in my opinion, because it's keyless. So, and it doesn't need to be cleaned up, which is even better. Go ahead and thread that all the way up, and then this is just give it a good firm. That's all you really need. It's it's on there now. Ironically, I think this adjustable base that I found that I'm going to use it as an example here it goes to the vise that'll be in the next picture. But <clears throat> that doesn't really matter. But what I'm trying to demonstrate here is this is my other Walker Turner drill, and it also has a VFD on it. You can see turn it on and the speed is very adjustable and I'm super happy with it. I paid quite a bit of money for this KB drive. It is a nice drive but it was a couple hundred dollars. The other drive is cheaper. I'll show you that here in a second. But the difference between this drill press, this one has an automatic down feed where I can go ahead and hit that. It'll start to travel down if I have the belt hooked up. I do not have it. Well, maybe I do have it hooked up. No, I don't have it. I don't have it hooked up now. But if I wanted to, for example, put this base on the T-slotted table over there, I it wouldn't work now because the bolt holes are too small. And if I wanted to drill these out, I'd have to hold on and drill these out and hope that this thing doesn't go wild because I'd sort of slide it around and try to align everything with the with the drill bit that would be here. And long ago, when I lived in South Florida, I was drilling a hole in a piece of half-inch plate steel. And this isn't a, this isn't a high horsepower; it's a fractional horsepower drill drill press. But it, the thing got out of control, and I had a welding glove on at the time. It it got loose, swung around, hit this hand, tore the the little finger off of the welding glove, the leather welding glove. And this hand didn't work right for probably I don't know. It seemed like six months or so. It was, it was scary. If I didn't have the glove on, I, I don't know if it would have taken the finger or not, but 
But not having something pinned down in a vise is a recipe for disaster. Typically what I do, you know, be honest with you, is I just, you know, prop it up against something so that it doesn't get, sorry for the shakiness, but I'll prop it up against this, or use this clamp or something. It's not a good idea. It just gets me by, keeps me from things going completely out of control. But, again, that's a problem with this one, and I'm going to show you why the radial press is better. Now, with the radial drill press, it gives me a couple degrees of freedom in terms of, of motion. Make sure it's loose. I can go left and right. Again, it's very hard for me to see what you're seeing right now. I go left and right, and I can go back and forth. And in that case, I can bolt this. This is bolted down. It is affixed to the table, and it is not going anywhere. And now I can come through line up these holes I mean, this is not a real example but I go through line them up lock the table off and then I go about drilling my holes and when I go to the next hole rinse and repeat I don't have to reset and try to line everything up again it gives me all the latitude in the world to sort of reach out wherever I need space wise and this is a 24 by 30 inch table or something like that very, very heavy duty, big T slots in it. I think we'll be covered that in the beginning part, but let me just punch one hole in here for you and then we'll call this video done. Now the VFD, the variable frequency drive, couldn't be easier to hook up. It's that's how many hertz, 12.11, whatever. That's so that's the, the lower the hertz, the slower the motor, and it will go to. 105% typical frequency is 60 hertz. And there's a couple different jack shafts that are changing the gear reduction down. So I don't know how noisy that'll be for you. But I can go ahead and stop this. And I can hit reverse. And then run, and now I'm going backwards. So if I wanted to tap, I could tap. And there's other functions I could do with this. But for, for what this drill press is going to do, that's more than enough. So. I think I paid a hundred dollars for that. There are, it takes 120 volts in and gives you 240 volts three phase out. It's super easy to wire up. There's just the, the common, the neutral, or the, the ground, the neutral, and the hot line. And then your line one, two, and three for the other ones. You do not have to be an electrician to know how to wire this thing up. It is super easy. I've got to put the inspection plate back on the front to tidy it up. The only thing I don't like is it doesn't have like typical conduit grommets on the outside. That's what I liked about this KB one because it gave me the ability to run conduit out and, and have everything nice and tidy in there. So this is a little bit like a Jamaican Public Works looking project here, but for all intents and purposes it works fine. So that's, that's the introduction. I have obviously got to find a better spot for this. I'm going to rearrange the shop. You'll see that at a later date, it's just so hot out. But anyway, that's my new Walker Turner Radio Arm Grill Press. Thanks for watching. Hope you're having a good day.